Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel and welcome to another Godzilla live stream. And today it is 1975's Terror of Mechagodzilla, which came out 45 years ago and is the last movie in the original Godzilla series or the Showa era for those who are not fans. And uh, yeah, uh, just going to get through all this uh, as fast as possible. Uh, welcome to everyone in the chat. Glad you could join us. Uh, Gzilla 100. 2020 has broken me mentally and physically. 2020 feels like its own decade. Like it has just been a shit show of epic proportions. Uh, so yeah, I, I everyone feels you. Uh, next up, we got um, yeah, we just got the regulars here. Gzilla 100, Spiders Prime. Razor bike to Quante to Justin Toner. Glad you could all join us. Uh, for those of you who are watching this post, or those of you who are lurking um, and not joining in in the chat, well, first of all, I encourage you to join in the chat if you are watching this but not interacting. Black Wolf two forty nine, welcome. For those of you who are watching this in post production, uh, I encourage you to watch this live. And if you don't own this movie on DVD or Blu-ray, you can find it on again the Criterion Channel or HBO Max. But this is the last Godzilla movie that is available on the Criterion Channel, and the last one that's on HBO Max for some time, uh, at least until Godzilla: King of the Monsters from last year. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna hop into it right now. I have everything set up. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to push the play button right now. So yeah, if uh, yeah, for those of you who don't own any of the Godzilla movies on DVD or Blu-ray, um, with the next couple of movies, uh, you probably have to rent them. Uh, unless they're completely unavailable digitally. Like, I think uh, the next movie we're going to be doing, The Return of Godzilla, isn't available. So um, it might be a little tricky to join in. Uh, but I can tell you that um, King of the Monsters is on HBO Max. The Roland Emmerich Godzilla and the anime trilogy are on Netflix. Gee, that's coincidental that the very worst things to come out of the Godzilla franchise are on Netflix. But uh, we'll get to those when we get to them. It's very unusual that a Godzilla movie opens up with a recap of the last one. Since this is the, this is the only Godzilla movie since Raids Again that has any like direct uh, continuity with the last one. Or at least it acts like a true continuation. But it's good to hear that Ifakube score again. And Yokiko Takayama is a name that I don't think gets enough credit within the Godzilla fandom because she is the only screenwriter within the franchise that's, well, a woman. And uh, Ishiro Honda has stated that he regrets not working with her on other movies because getting a female's perspective on the franchise is a breath of fresh air. And I agree. Like, I feel like there needs to be more... I'd like to see more uh, women take on Godzilla, whether it's in a directing department or writing. So that's something that's pretty interesting. And the fact that I found out that she was actually at a screenwriting school and there was a contest to come up with a sequel to Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. And her entry was so good that Tomi Kitanaka hired her to actually write the film. So that's... That's, that's one of those very weird screenwriting stories that's like... Wow, you got your first job right out of the gate. And during this entire montage, that's the only bit. That 
little second there is all we see of King Caesar. Uh, apparently, he gets no respect in this prologue. I am uh, Razor Bike says I accidentally rewinded and is out of sync. What's the time? I am at three minutes and twenty seconds. It's funny that only later in the Showa era would they actually, um, like, cre like actually list the suit actors who played each of the monsters. Who is more of a pain in the ass for Godzilla, Mecha Godzilla or Ghidorah? I would say Mecha Godzilla, just because. Mecha Godzilla has come closer to actually killing Godzilla than Ghidorah ever has, even though Ghidorah is iconic in terms of being Godzilla's arch nemesis. Directed by Ashiro Honda, the the very not only Ashiro Honda's last Godzilla movie, but his sole directing. Like, his final directing credit, uh, because afterwards he would basically work with Akira Kurosawa for a number of his movies, including Ran and Dreams. There's what, there's a uh, Katsura. Oh, uh, there was something in the chat about Criterion. Um, it would be great if Criterion could get the rights to the Heisei Millennium Era series. Uh, I that's not never gonna happen, like because Criterion is more of a uh, is more um, more concerned with like actual film history and like preserving films that are more like culturally important and. I would say more than the Heisei and Millennium series, uh, the Showa series is more important to Godzilla's history than the Heisei and Millennium series. And Criterion normally doesn't pick up uh, more recent movies. I mean, that makes some exceptions, like Wes Anderson's entire filmography and um, uh, Marriage Story, which they're releasing next month. But uh, in terms of Godzilla in the Heisei Millennium series, I do not see them releasing. Um, yeah, I do not see them releasing those series. Like that little arm on the submarine. That's a cool introduction to Titanosaurus, huh? 
Um, Funny how there's like a tornado right there and then Titanosaurus is not over at the tornado, like the like whirlpool area. He's still farther off. Apparently he's walking on. If that shot, if you were to look at that shot of Titanosaurus from like the ground up, it looks like he's walking on water. That's a cool introduction to kind of a t relatively tame monster. Because considering how bizarre Hedora, Gigan, and Megalon were, Titanosaurus looks rather... Titanosaurus looks like something that came out of the 60s. Black Wolf 249, what time are you at? I am at the 9 minute and 32 second mark. They also picked up Armageddon on Criterion 2. That's true, but at the time... Um, okay, that picture right there, that is not a flying saucer. That is a... Uh, that looked like a, a one of those like drones that you pick up from uh, Best Buy or Target. But that did not look like a flying saucer. Um hey, wait, with with Armageddon on the Criterion Collection, that is true, except that uh, Criterion at the time, uh, if if I'm correct, they were they were with a company that kind of forced them to release Armageddon. So they didn't really have a choice to release it. But that being said, I do own Armageddon on the Criterion Collection because it's just one of those things where it's like, why does this exist? Like Armageddon's not like a god-awful movie by any stretch, but the fact that it's on the Criterion channel is pretty questionable. Could you review a movie called Ape? From Gzilla 100. And then Razorbike says don't do ape. Is that the movie where. Uh, the, Is that the movie where. A giant gorilla knocks down a helicopter. And then flips off the camera. Okay. Why is there suddenly doubt. Why was there doubt for a second that what attacked them could be a giant dinosaur? Because, like, Godzilla exists. They were sent down there to find the remains of Mechagodzilla. Why is... Why is a dinosaur out of the question? Okay, how did he survive? We saw him get shot in the chest. No, not in the chest, uh, the throat. Turned into an ape. And then um, he was still in the headquarters as it blew up in the last movie. Oh, that one dude's got the um, the evil goatee from Community. So clearly the black hole that they came out of is the darkest timeline, which is where we are now.
I mean, this movie, like back in the 70s, considering that the Godzilla series was not like, was not getting the bigger budgets that it was back in the 60s, they didn't really care about continuity. So I guess it's just like, I don't know. Like, it's best just not to ask questions. Because, I mean, because prior to that, because of the studio system that uh, Japanese studios were doing, um, uh, all the actors, like, you'd see several of the same actors in different roles in the Godzilla series. Like, Akito Hirata, who was a scientist in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla and is now back as a completely different scientist. Community is, I think it's still on Hulu, but it's on Netflix as well. I highly recommend it. It's, Community is my favorite TV show out there. Like, the most obvious place a mad scientist could live at uh, is in some haunted house. Oh, Razorback. Uh, now, like, I will say this. When you watch Community, in uh, the fourth... No, no. In the third and first episodes of season four, which fans call the Gas Leak season, uh, just keep your eyes open for a certain somebody in the background. That's all I'll say. I am um, at the 17 and 17 minutes and 10 second mark uh, where um, we get fully introduced to Katsuda. Uh, it's gas leak season, and um, it's better you just watch the show to understand why it's called the gas leak season. Because it results in uh, some funny jokes later on that I can't spoil.
Well, at least they don't foolishly just go, oh, well, we'll believe her. It took me a long time. Uh, it wasn't until, I think, uh, classic media re-released the Godzilla movies on DVD where they have bonus features and everything. Uh, where I, It wasn't until then where I realized that Dr. Mifune was played by Akito Hirata. The fact that he looks like a Japanese Albert Einstein makes him completely unrecognizable. Yeah, it's like I wouldn't have never guessed in a million years that that was the same actor that played Dr. Serizawa. Uh, who would win? Showa, Mechagodzilla, or Kiryu? Um. I mean, uh, the original Mechagodzilla definitely has the firepower, but Kiryu is a more, like, physical fighter. It ultimately depends on Kiryu's pilot. Um, yeah, it dep It ultimately depends on how the Mechagodzillas work because in the first movie that the original Mechagodzilla and Kiryu debuted in, they were pretty quick at fighting and they could hold their own. And then for some reason in the sequels, they were slow as hell. Like almost sluggishly slow. Speaking of which... If Akube really did make a menacing Mechagodzilla theme. It's funny, he would give two different themes to two different Mechagodzillas. <laughs> Colonel Sanders, um... That I never thought of that, but I'm still going to go with Einstein. Commander Mug Mugger. Is that his character's name from Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla? Or did, did he even have a name? Let me look that up. Um, good old Toho Kingdom will hopefully give me the answer. Kuronuma is the is his character's name in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. So no, so apparently this is supposed to be a different character. You know, maybe it would have been funny if they just pulled a crank, too, where it's the same actor, but the only explanation is that 
he's the other character's brother. Well, he, he sure got out. For saying that no he, no earthling has invaded has evaded security, he sure uh, got out and doing some fancy martial arts. Yeah, those spacesuits, like the helmets, just look I don't know. Like like the problem with um, the Godzilla series at this point. Oh, they oh they caught him. And they killed him. Okay, I guess... I guess he wasn't lying. Um... Yo, what was I gonna say? Well, fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say. Guys, what was I about to say before they, um... Oh, that's right. Um, like, I know the Godzilla movies weren't getting that big of budgets by the 70s because of what was going on with the Japanese film industry, but the the problem with the way this movie looks in terms of, like, the alien spacesuits, it just feels like the spacesuits feel 10 years outdated. Uh, let's say it's a Kane. Um, if Akane is the pilot from Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, then Kiryu would definitely get the upper hand. Um, but if it was Akiba, Mechagodzilla would probably do better. Once again, uh, the the crazy mayor from Yojimbo pops up in this movie. I don't understand why they're just randomly cutting to him. The actor playing the guy trying to escape was one of the main characters from the last movie, I believe. Were the, was he? But what wasn't the um? Wasn't the like, the leader in that submarine voyage at the beginning of the movie was um. Yeah, wasn't the guy in the submarine leading the expedition to find Mechagodzilla's remains? Wasn't he the played by the same actor who was the main character in Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla? She is right over there. I suppose, like, at this point, like, since actors weren't under contract by the studios, this might have been um, either Ashiro Honda or Tomiyuki Tanaka, like, asking him to come on board for this movie.
Oh, Jesus. Uh, he doesn't look like uh, one of the same characters from the last movie. Who's Japanese Ringo Starr? Oh, I don't know if it's coming up right here, but there's one scene that I didn't even know existed because of um, the cut. Because I've seen this movie several times on VHS uh, when it was the butchered Terror of Godzilla cut that Bob Kahn put together. Um, but. Um, that door, that, like, that door is obviously not part of Mechagodzilla. But uh, there's a scene that happens later on that made me go, whoa. Yeah, these aliens are just like evil. Like they really make the um they really make um some heinous decisions throughout. As a uh, Black Wolf 249 pointed out, uh which I'll show up but um I don't I'm not going to say it right out. All right, that dude is everywhere. Okay, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's his age, but or maybe it's the way he's directed, but those are some weird faces. Those are some obvious uh ADA, ADA grunts. No, wait. ADR, I'm sorry. ADR. ADA. That's not that's completely wrong. See there, like it, like this flashback, like you could tell that's Akito Hirata, but when he's got the Einstein mustache and the hair, he's unrecognizable. Now, this is really bizarre that, like, these guys just come out of nowhere uh, to help, Katsu help Katsura. And, like, did were they spying on them? Because, I don't know, Katsura's, like, backstory is just very, one of the more tragic in terms of human characters in the franchise, huh? 
Akita Hayata looks like Doc Brown to me. Uh, the hair is not long enough or crazy looking enough for him to be Doc Brown. Or for him to look like Doc Brown. And the organs that play uh, during this sequence are pretty haunting. Yeah, it's like the aliens, um, they, out of nowhere, brought um, Katsura back to life. Uh, only to, like, basically blackmail her father into helping them, like, rebuild Mechagodzilla and take over the world. Intentionally get Katsura hurt. Uh, that. I, I don't know about that. Like. Like. That flashback. It's tragic. But it ultimately doesn't make any sense. When you really think about. The fact that the aliens just come. In the second. She gets electrocuted. And presumably killed. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Like, did, did something... Because clearly the submarine didn't do anything. Wait, or did they? I'd always thought that the... Did, did the humans ever do anything? Did the sub do anything to Titanosaurus? Because I don't want to go through another Mandela effect. Where... For the longest time, I thought the sub did something, but um, but it never happened. Yeah, because clearly you're going to catch them on foot. Okay, your car. That works. Okay, the plot. <laughs> the plot uh, caused Titanosaurus to glitch, and they didn't update him to the next version. That makes... There you go. <laughs> huh. You know, he didn't get really, he didn't really didn't get whacked that hard. But 
those guns. <laughs> well, hey, you guys know that they're close. <laughs> This scene right here, like I'm just like, like this, like it's just like, to quote Corey Goodwin, yo, like he's just sitting there and just going, whoosh, whoosh. I won't say it's the best entrance of Godzilla in the franchise. For me, the 2014 movie had a much grander entrance, but it is definitely one of the best, which we'll get to later on. And there's Kenji Sahara. Wait, you can't be sure that they're aliens? Whatever. Oh, jeez. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Had to bring in that Devo song. <laughs> Fantastic! Welcome. Now, the, I mean, the music playing in the background here, like it's clearly background music, but it's Claire de Lune. Yeah, Claire de Lune, which is a famous piece of classical music, but it's cool that this was used in the very first trailer for King of the Monsters. Funny that Titanosaurus is just sitting at the ocean floor. Yeah, it's a shame Rodan couldn't help out Godzilla in this movie. I mean, as we'd see later on, Titanosaurus is the one that uh, 
ends up fighting Godzilla more than Mechagodzilla. Yes, or Mothra. Like, it's shame Mothra couldn't help out in this movie. Doesn't Claire de Lune appear in Violante as well? I don't think so. Now it's suddenly daytime, and there's stock footage from Mothra vs. Godzilla and War of the Gargantuas. And Astro Monster. Oh, that was a jarring zoom out. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. It's on the TV, isn't it? See, I don't think I really want, like, it's important to have human characters in the movie to kind of, I don't know, because the human characters, even if they're just, like, boring characters, they help, like, move the plot from one monster fight to another. So, I don't think we'll ever see a Godzilla movie that lacks human characters. And plus, actors gotta work. So while the tanks are stock footage, uh, the airplanes there, the those F-4 Phantoms are not, um, they're part of the movie. I'd say the plane effects for this late in the series are pretty good. Even if Titanosaurus like jumps like he's on the moon and he's floating in midair. I guess a Super Geiger counter is different from a normal Geiger counter because it was able to show a map of the Japanese coast and show that Godzilla was coming in from that far away. Uh, 
And we are 48 minutes into this movie. And Godzilla has finally showed up. Shown up. It's good to hear that rendition of the Godzilla theme again, which was originally the military march in the original Godzilla. So she can blind people now. Yeah, from that look, it looks like she got shot in the neck and shouldn't have died. Love the shot of the camera panning around as Godzilla and Titanosaurus face off. I mean, just end. Like, that was a very brief... Um, like, you talk about the... Uh, the Godzilla Muto fight at the Hawaii airport being too short. But uh, with the camera moving around, I think that was because um, Teriyushi Nakano like, really loved working with Honda. And because Honda allowed Nakano a lot more like freedom when directing the special effects and allowed him to do some shots that Jun Fukuda's films never had. Or even Yoshimitsu Bano's Godzilla vs. Hedora. Yeah, that character is just kind of nowhere. That is the fakest pair of breasts you'll ever see in a movie. Like, when I did my review uh, two years ago, I had to censor that bit. Would be just, just in the base, just in the off chance that YouTube wouldn't, um, wouldn't abide by it. But uh, those things are so fake. Like, I don't see how they would, um, I don't see how they would think of it as real. Or, a, like, a violation of their terms of services. Yeah, they've got Dr. Mifune, like, on a chain. Okay, if you're watching the dub, uh, then, like, that, um, then it, most likely, they probably cut that part out uh, that I just mentioned. But that kind of goes to show how, um, how, like, loose... Uh, the Japanese are and what's appropriate to show to kids and what isn't because this was still made at a point where Godzilla's movies were more aimed towards kids. Okay, I gotta be honest, like, I think this movie is slightly better with the human stuff than the last film was, but 
the last movie excelled at the monster stuff more. Right down to the point where I forgot that Mechagodzilla was in this movie for a second. You know, earlier on, if um, if Dr. Mifune unleashed Titanosaurus, like, without informing the aliens, what was to stop him from just sending Titanosaurus to... What, what just stopped them from... What stopped him from sending Titanosaurus to their base and destroying Mechagodzilla? Because obviously, like, at this point... Mifune had his own intentions, but since Mech since Titanosaurus retreated, like he is now like under like tight grip by the aliens. Why didn't they just have? Why didn't they just have Tomoko I herself topless? Uh, cause it's sleazy. Like, like, it would just be, it would just be, I mean, look, like, even with, like, the fake pair right there, it's still, like, you still have to ask why, but it's less sleazy than actually, like, having her topless. And again, these movies were, like, their target audience was still kids, so... I think like a fake pair of breasts was fine, but like an actual like 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 a real pair is a no no still. Yeah, maybe not have your guns out as you're walking towards him and then just putting them away like you saw nothing. I'm sorry, those helmets. The helmets are too much. Like, the helmet is more goofy than the commander in the last movie smoking a cigar and drinking scotch. There's that talk about how we're going to cleanse the world of like humankind uh, and acting like it's a, like their saviors whatever So we are 58 minutes into this movie and only now has Mechagodzilla activated And, like, it's all this build-up to Mechagodzilla returning, pretty much. And outside of, like, utterly destroying Tokyo, Mechagodzilla doesn't do a whole lot in this movie.
Wait, I'm I'm confused by, like, watch what you do with that arm, Mechagodzilla. I'm confused by that comment. Is it the po is it the, uh, like the pose that he does? Because we saw if so, we saw the aliens. We saw the second in command doing that exact same pose as well. Thank God they got out of there just in time. Although they seem pretty close to the base. Yeah, Mechagodzilla's flying pretty slowly. You got to think about how lucky they were to keep Mechagodzilla away from the city in the last movie. Because considering how destructive he is this time around. Um, yeah, they got lucky in the last the last time. It would have been so like. It would have been so cool if King Caesar had come back for this movie. Because they. If it wasn't for that stupid prophecy, like, it would, like, that probably would have given them more free reign to bring King Caesar back to help Godzilla. Yeah, these two monsters are pretty slow right now. Yeah, that's the bummer about the monster scenes here is that uh, it's slower than usual. And that is a very... Uh, that, that composite shot right there, like, it's so out of proportion from how tall those two monsters are and how far away they should be. This part here is cool, where Mechagodzilla's... Basically, his finger missiles are so destructive that they go into, like, the ground and cause the street to, to move. I understand that must have been, like, a... Like, just a glitch with the special effects. And... There were certain parts of the city that moved inorganically, but that's still cool.
Yes, head right to the monsters as they're destroying the city and as everyone else is evacuating. So I'm going to assume those kids are dead because because they're far away. Like Godzilla is pretty far away to save them. So it's like, is Titanosaurus trying to guard Mechagodzilla? Like, see, here's what I mean by Mechagodzilla doesn't do a whole lot in this movie. Um, Titanosaurus is the one that, like, does all the work with, like, blowing Godzilla away with his tail. And then Mechagodzilla just decides to um, blast Godzilla with his laser beams. And then Mecha Titanosaurus comes in there to kick Godzilla while he's down. And kick him pretty far, I gotta say. And again, Mechagodzilla just stands there. Yeah, this is probably, like, the suit in this movie is probably the better one. Because, um, the, probably the best one in the 70s because Godzilla looks, has this look where he's just constantly mad. See, because again, right here. Like, that's some choppy editing, but Godzilla is only fighting Titanosaurus, and Titanosaurus is the only one who's actually putting up a fight, while Mechagodzilla... Like, what is Mechagodzilla doing? Like, yeah, that's why I think the last movie was better at the monster action, because it seems like Mechagodzilla only intervenes when Titanosaurus is in trouble. See, because Mechagodzilla and Titanosaurus could have ganged up on Godzilla, but they don't. Like, I guess the plan... I guess from the alien's perspective, uh, they want to let... Um, they want to let Titanosaurus do all the work, so that way Mechagodzilla can... Because Mechagodzilla is their prized possession. They want him to... Um, they want him to be alive for, like, the bigger conquest of Earth. But even right there, Mechagodzilla is slow at firing his lasers. Okay, this part's hilarious. Like, this shouldn't make any sense at all that Titanosaurus is able to toss Godzilla up and down with just his mouth. Yeah, Titanosaurus has been doing all the work. 
And there goes Godzilla falling into another hole. Now, like, I know this movie's better than the movie that I'm about to name drop, but, like, this is kind of like Attack of the Clones in the sense that, um, like, the terror of Godzilla, the terror of Mechagodzilla doesn't actually take place until the final act of the movie. Yeah? Like, you wait almost an hour to see Mechagodzilla actually... Yeah, you wait an hour to see Mechagodzilla attack. And, you, you, I mean, the monster fight, for what you get, is cool. But Mechagodzilla himself, again, it's like, wow, that's it? Really? Okay, did... Did Kenji Sahara ever speak in this movie? Because I, I, I don't think Kenji Sahara's had one single line of dialogue in this entire film. Who, Kenji Sahara? He played one of the military guys that was just there when they were loading the supersonic transmitter on the helicopter. I don't know if he pops up again in this movie, but if he does, I'll try to point him out. Yeah, so right now Titanosaurus is just dancing around on, at the moment, Godzilla's grave. And Mechagodzilla is, I don't know what he's doing. So I don't know why Titanosaurus has his hands behind his back. Yeah, see right here, like, Mechagodzilla is sure taking his sweet-ass time to destroy that helicopter. Like, he could have done it already with his laser eyes, but that just gave Godzilla enough time to come out of the Earth. It's weird how Godzilla's tail just sticks out randomly. <laughs> I like that moment there, like, Probably the most human moment we've seen of Godzilla in a long time, where he just dusts himself off. And here comes the stock footage of Mechagodzilla shooting everything he has at his disposal at Godzilla. Some shot, like there's maybe a one or two shots of Mechagodzilla that was made for this movie, but you gotta look for the blue number two on his arm, because the rest of it is pretty much stock footage from the last film. But most of the footage you see of Godzilla running from the explosions are for this movie. Like this shot's from the last one. That's from the last movie because Godzilla's... The suit looks more happy and cheerful. 
This is from this movie. And now Godzilla's on fire. Yeah, what those all the ammunition wasn't enough because now now Godzilla now Mecha Godzilla is actually trying to put up a fight against Godzilla since they're at close combat. Yeah, there are definitely some more interesting shots with the special effects this time around, and that could have been because of Shiro Honda directing the film this time and just having a better relationship with Nakano than than probably he had with Jun than probably Nakano had with Jun Fukuda. I mean, they, they updated the Mechagodzilla suit. Like, it wasn't... Because if you look at the Mechagodzilla suit here versus the one in the first movie, there are a lot of differences. Like, uh, the Mechagodzilla here is a darker tone of silver. Like I mentioned before, there's a blue number two on his arm. And uh, Mechagodzilla just looks more evil this time around than the last one. This part's slightly disappointing, like in terms of a lack of continuity. Yeah, you gotta love that darkest timeline goatee. I wouldn't say uh, the original Mecha Godzilla totally sucked at close quarters combat because he he held his own against King Caesar, and there were several points where. Uh, the two of them fought in close quarters combat. Yeah, this is disappointing because, like, it's just like a bird face rather than them turning into monkey people again. I mean, maybe it was a heavier suit, but by 1975, they had they had already like perfected the craft of monster suit making to where the material could look good enough, but also be light enough for the suit actors to uh, move around a lot. That's that's clever. That like they anticipated that Godzilla would rip Mechagodzilla's head off, so they created a backup. This is like Dr. Mifune dying is like just some serious over the top acting. No, you can ask right in the chat. You can ask in the chat. Yeah, the uh, okay, so before Classic Media released um Terror of Mechagodzilla on DVD in, I think, 2007. Um, we'd all been familiar with Terror of Mechagodzilla, like, through VHS and the original classic media release. And the American version, like, the version that we were all familiar with on VHS was actually the re-edited theatrical version in the U.S. known as The Terror of Godzilla and... That, that version was... I mentioned this in my review, but that version is infamous for 
like just butchering the movie uh, to the point where it like it cut out anything that would be considered violent all to get a G rating and cutting this sequence out is the most criminal. Like it's it's a it's a tragic scene. It's a tragic moment where like Katsura knows that the only way Mechagodzilla can be deactivated is if she dies. So again, like like once again another Ishiro Honda film where the female characters are one of the most important in the series. And in the Bob Kahn edit of Terror Mechagodzilla, like after the main character just says, Katsuda, I still love you. Uh, Mechagodzilla just suddenly deactivates. And that whole part is just cut out. And it's like, like, like it's to the point where the ending just doesn't make any sense. And it's just wrapped up like that. I'm wearing headphones, so I can't tell if I'm snapping properly. But I, I'm gr so grateful that we have access to the Japanese version because, like, the ending makes a lot more sense. So either everyone just missed, like they, they just shot completely around him like they're stormtroopers, or his um, suit was bulletproof. Huh? And then those UFOs like came out of nowhere. And we'll never see them again because Godzilla just destroyed them. Yeah, like, Titanosaurus's tail, like, there's some, like, there's no real weight to it, like, with, um, Godzilla's tail. Like, I understand that Titanosaurus's tail was designed for it to be a fan as well, so that's why it's so skinny, but when it's closed, it just doesn't look that convincing, and there's no, and we don't see Titanosaurus actually fall into the ocean, like, it's just a big explosion of water. Yeah, this whole moment here was cut as well, where I guess he's bury, trying to bury Katsura or just leaving her there. What, whatever, it's going, um, it's... It's criminal that they cut that whole moment out. There's that fake Godzilla suit. It's interesting that... Like, this is kind of a... Not the best Godzilla movie to end the original series on, but at least it didn't end with a movie like Godzilla vs. Gigan. And the fact that it ended with... Um, Three out of four of the original, like, creators uh, is fitting. Ashiro Honda, Tomiki Tanaka, and Akira Ifukube. And, yeah, that's... That's Terror of Mechagodzilla and the end of the Showa era. So, yeah. We're 15 movies in, and if this had been before 2016... 2014, jeez... Uh, I would have said that we are past the halfway point, but now that there are a total of 50, 35 Godzilla movies, if you count the Roland Emmerich movie, 
we're not even halfway through yet. So we have 20 more movies to go. So next week, uh, first of all, um, uh, Gizel 100 says, I'm going camping soon with no Wi-Fi. I was wondering if you could push the watch longs back. Yes, I know it would be, it would ruin it for everyone, but just like hanging out with you guys, I don't want to miss it. Uh, unfortunately I can't because like you said, it wouldn't be fair to everyone else who's watching it. Um, so, but again, you can watch, but again, like you'll be gone for a week. Um, I hope, I hope you stay safe because the pandemic hasn't ended. Like, like, so I, I hope you guys, like, if you're going with your family, then please, by all means, stay safe. Uh, wear masks. Just be be safe in every sense of the word because this the coronavirus has not gone away. And, uh, like, cases here in the States are just not decreasing. They are just getting worse and worse. Um, but, again, like, I can't um, – like I can't postpone these things by a week for just one person because again, like you mentioned, it's not really fair for everyone else uh, that I would have to push these back just to accommodate one person. But again, with your camping trip, I hope you have fun. Be safe, and again, you could always watch these watch alongs in post uh, when they're not live. It's again, it's better if you watch them live, and that goes to everybody who is watching this in post production at the moment. It is better that uh, you watch these watch-alongs live and interact with the chat because um, even if you're not a Godzilla fan, you can still treat these like just a regular old Q&A and ask me questions. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, next week, we will be starting the Heisei Godzilla era with one of my favorites of the series, The Return of Godzilla. And uh, once again, if you guys uh, are not, if you just don't own any of the Godzilla movies on uh, DVD or Blu-ray or own, or if you don't own most of them, uh, from here on out, watching the series might be a little tricky. With The Return of Godzilla, I know that, I don't think it's available to rent on YouTube or iTunes, so it's best that you do have the DVD or Blu-ray with you. Um... But uh, I think with the Heisei, I think with the rest of the movie, starting with Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, you can rent them on YouTube. Um, so that'll be easy to do. But then again, you would have to pay money to rent them. Um, or if you have another alternative to watching them, that would be the best option. Got to take a drink. Um, so yeah, The Return of Godzilla will be next week. And uh, once again, uh, thank you guys for joining me live. If you're watching this in post-production, please try to tune in to one of these live watch-alongs and interact with the chat. It's a lot of fun. And uh, if you guys are what, really like what I'm doing with the channel and you want to not only financially support the channel, but try to get more live watch-alongs, you could go over to patreon.com forward slash the real Mr. Robinson. And for only a one dollar and for only one dollar a month you will be able to get exclusive live watch alongs. I'm trying to reach a certain goal before I do these exclusively for patrons because right now I think I only have three patrons. But once again, if you cannot support the channel financially, that's that's totally fine. That is fine. Your YouTube subscriptions and just your overall support of the channel is good enough. And uh, yeah, again, everyone just stay safe. Wear masks. The pandemic is still going on. Coronavirus has not gone away. Uh, Black Wolf 249 says the virus may fizzle out eventually. I want to be optimistic. Uh, so, but I just, it, it's, people just have to be smarter and the government just has to stop being completely inept in how they're responding to this. But I can see that I'm losing... I can't tell if it's just because it's the end of the stream and I'm rambling or I decide to get political by the end of the stream, but I am losing viewers. So I'm just going to end it right now. Again, thank you guys for watching. And this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.